Kid and Vivian decided they had to stop their creepy neighbor Christopher from coming to dinner no matter the cost, so they went off to Waynesworth Enterprises to meet Mel, the girl Chris is in love with. She took them out for ice cream after work and explained that Chris had sexually harassed her, so she got a restraining order. The sisters took Mel back to their home so she could explain to their mother how dangerous Chris is, but Chris saw them pull in and got it into his head that they were setting him and Mel up on a date together. Just as Mel convinced Mimi that Chris was no good, he burst through the door in his best suit and cologne to win back the love of his life. A Girl Who Brought Down the World Chapter 3 Cops Kid drops her pencil and closes her diary. The noise that she heard distracted her from finishing the day's entry. Mom? Dad? It's too early to be special time. Does that mean I can't come out? Yelled Kid from inside her room. Kid! Don't go out! Vivian yelled back. Okay. She went up and locked her door. She stared up at the ceiling while she kept hearing various banging and shattering noises. Man, this special time with Mom and Dad is really loud this time. She turned up the radio. Kid, let me in. Dear Lord, let me in, screamed Miles from outside the room. Listen to your father. Let us in, echoed Mimi. And next up on QT96.9, the Striped Zebras. We were watching with our eyes as a little guide. We saw 15 people move into the groove, so we joined them up in stride. We were dancing. Bleh, I hate this band. She turns off the radio and hears only silence. Can I come out now? No response. I guess I can come out now. It's over, right? She unlocks her door and sees the house in ruins. She takes a few steps outside and sees the family car missing. She decides to go back inside and make herself a sandwich. There isn't much left in the refrigerator. They must have gone out grocery shopping. I wish I could help redecorate the house. She munches on her sandwich and watches some television. An hour passes, and still no sign of the family. The television blares up and a breaking news segment begins. Breaking news. Currently, there is a three-way police chase between an insane man, a family, and a police squadron, reports the anchor. Currently, there is little information about this situation except this police tape given out to all news stations in the area. That's our car! Kid exclaims. What you are about to see might frighten small children. I can take it. A poorly focused shot is shown on the television. All right, we're here about this 911 call, shouts a police officer. The distress call made about the insane man. The inside of Kid's house is shown, and Christopher, brandishing a knife, can be seen chasing after Vivian, Miles, Mimi, and Melanie. I love you, Melanie. The cops? Those jerks aren't going to get me this time, shouts Christopher as he lunges towards the officer. The officer is stabbed in the chest as he attempts to call for backup. Christopher resumes looking for Melanie. Sir, we legally cannot harm this man, says the cameraman. What? He exclaims as he attempts to stop the bleeding. What do you mean we can't take this guy down? Miles and Mimi can be seen banging on Kid's door. All right then, shouts the officer. We have to get these people out of here as soon as possible. Just then, Kid's family and Melanie rush out the door and into the family car while Christopher runs next door into his own. Okay, men, let's go. Just then... Christopher rams his vehicle into the officer's car, damaging the engine, and then immediately chasing after the family car. God darn it, that b just destroyed the engine. Jim, what were you saying about not being able to harm this man? He's under government protection, informs the cameraman. It says here that he is under legal protection, and we could all go to jail for the rest of our lives just for hurting him. What the heck? Yeah, the newly elected Democrats just passed some bill that gives his kind some sort of legal protection from their own actions. They say he is unable to fully process his thoughts or something like that. Those d hippies. Kid immediately runs outside to look for any sign of the family. A police car pulls up. Hello, little girl. Are you wondering what happened to your house? Says an officer. I already know. I just watched it on television. Then you know what he's doing right now. Is my family okay? They will be as long as the car still has enough fuel. Who knows what he will do if he catches up to them. Will my family die? Maybe. Christopher turns on his radio as he chases after the family car. He listens to the report of an insane man in a car chase with the police. Wow, I'm glad I'm not crazy like him. Yes, you definitely aren't. Let's go get our future wife and daughter. Melanie, I love you. Miles attempts to shake Christopher off. For an insane man, he is an impressive driver, notes Miles. 
Oh, come on, honey, try harder. This is not how I imagined I would die. I was imagining accidentally using a real gun instead of a fake gun during a movie rehearsal. Mimi continues on, forgetting about Christopher. Mom, this isn't the time, Vivian then panics. Come on, Dad, you can shake that boy off, I swear to God. If we get stopped, I'm ready to take him down with this fork. Vivian, you can't kill Christopher. Don't you remember about the new laws? Informed Melanie. Of course I do. I don't care about that. It's better that that freak is dead. I'd gladly be executed as long as that guy doesn't live. We're nearly out of gas. Any ideas? Says Miles. The police continue to chase after Christopher. How the heck did Christopher manage to get past our pit maneuver and our spike traps? One officer exclaims. You know, we haven't had a car chase in over 15 years. It's been a while, replies another. So how are we going to stop him without killing him? I have no clue. May God make sure that family is safe. Miles decides to take an exit and go into the nearest gas station. Shoot, I don't have my wallet on me. Anyone got any cash? Miles asks. And then I would become rich from all the top movies I would be in. Oh, and I don't have any money on me, says Mimi. I spent it all on ice cream, says Melanie. Nope, says Vivian. Christopher's car stops right behind them. Melanie, why do you run away when our love is written in the stars? I had a dream about it. God told me to marry you and have a future daughter. yippee ki -yay, mother shouts Vivian as she attempts to stab him with a fork. Christopher merely takes a step to the left as Vivian crashes headfirst into the concrete. Melanie begins to run, while Miles and Mimi tend to Vivian. Melanie soon realizes that Christopher is too fat to actually chase after her. She looks behind her to see Christopher out of breathe. Thank God, says Melanie, while she watches him attempt to reach her. Christopher then walks back to his car and begins to start it. Sh Melanie watches as the car slowly reaches her. Melanie, Christopher shouts. Please, I only want your love. She runs past the car and back to Miles, who is still tending to Vivian. I don't know what to do now, whispers Melanie. Me neither. Christopher slowly turns his car around and makes his way to the group. Just then, Mimi walks to the car and forces Christopher out. Christopher, I am really your future wife. I have been waiting for the day that you would come to me. I have waited so long. She begins to break down and cries on his shoulder. Why haven't you shown up in my life sooner? You are not really my true future wife, Christopher replies. Why do you shun me, Christopher? I just want to be in your life and have your future daughter. If you really are my future wife, you will bear my child. Christopher then begins to take off his pants. My acting lessons never prepared me for sex scenes, she yells, and then immediately runs back to Miles. The police car arrives and puts a barrier between Christopher and the group. Enough is enough, Christopher. We're putting you under arrest. Wait, we can do that, right? Says one officer. Yeah, I'm fairly certain we can, replies another. Right. Christopher, you're under arrest. You jerks can't stop me this time. I have waited for this day, Christopher shouts as he attempts to walk towards them. He takes a step and trips on his pants. All right, move. Let's get this family out of here, the officer shouts. At the police station, the press swarms the area. The chief attempts to answer some questions and eventually shoes them all away. Inside, Vivian wakes up. So... This is what it looks like, mutters Vivian. No, we're at the police station, Vivian, Mimi responds. So what happened? I'm not sure, but we're safe. Your father's over there talking with Melanie about Christopher. After you attempted to kill him, you were knocked unconscious and we were saved by the police. So what happened to Christopher? The police are handling that issue, says Mimi as she motions over to Miles. Great, that's good to hear. Wait, what about Kid? She is being taken over here right now. Hi, shouts Kid. Kid, why didn't you open the door for us? Shouts Mimi as Kid walks over to them. I was told to stay inside and not let any strangers come in. Well, at least you're safe, and that's all that matters. We have a problem. We cannot return to our house, Miles mentions. The house has sustained too much damage when Christopher entered. How bad is the damage? Asked Mimi. When Christopher started swinging his axe, the foundation for the walls became too weak. We now violate building codes. You guys can live with me, says Melanie. I have two rooms I could convert into guest rooms. Not so, says one officer. Christopher now knows where you live. You would be unsafe there. We can't put him in jail for longer than a week. What? replies Melanie. The Democrats and their liberal agenda gave his kind way too much lenience on his rights. 
Hey, you, get back out there. No one is allowed in here. I am here to help, replies the man. Who gave this guy clearance, replies the officer. He's here to provide a place for the group to stay, says another. Well, problem solved then. Who are you? asked Mimi. My name is Jones Brimley, the half-brother of Christopher Vega. Christopher is still on the ground. Ten minutes after the police cars had taken the group away, he cries out in pain. The pain I feel in my body does not begin to compare to the pain in my heart, he shouts. He gets up and looks around. It is quiet at the gas station. The man inside the station refuses to open up for Christopher. Get away, you crazy! Christopher turns away and looks toward the sky. He does not know what he is looking for, but his heart tells him to look for Melanie. He gets back into the car and listens to the radio. The police chase has ended with the family in safe hands. Those lousy jerks keeping Melanie away from me, Christopher yells as he smashes his radio. He uses his laptop and a wireless connection to locate every police station in the area. He finds the nearest one and breaks into it. Tell me where Melanie is, shouts Christopher. Please, don't hurt me, begs the receptionist. I would never hurt a pretty lady. Only if she was pretty, though. Ugly girls are below me. Christopher takes out his axe and begins to hack away at the desk. An elderly man enters the room. Please, we have nothing to do with Melanie. Please, just go. Please, just leave quietly. Christopher steps outside with axe and head in hand. Mom? Dad? It's too early to be special time. Does that mean I can't come out? Yelled Kid from inside her room. What the 